Welcome back to 2190 Live. Hello, hello. We are here with Debrat and Jessica Judy Dupart. First of all, how are you guys doing? You guys look amazing, beautiful as always. How are you guys doing today? Thank you. We're good. How about you? Um, you know, I'm hanging in there. I will say okay. that spring is here, you know, so I feel like uh the sun and the, the good weather is giving me giving me the, the energy I need. You know. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'm in I'm in Jersey right now, so our winter was it wasn't as harsh as it has been, but it, it's it hasn't been the best. So I'm really happy about this this sun and this warm weather. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but first off, I just wanted to say, um, both of you guys, congrats on everything that you guys have gotten done thus far within your marriage or relationship, and just individually as well. I think y'all are so cute. Y'all are so cute. Y'all, <laughs> y'all are so cute. I think that uh, your chemistry is so cool. So I got it. First of all, I'm a horse. I'm a horse girl, girl, a zodiac girl. What's y'all signs? I'm an Aries. I'm Aquarius. Okay. So okay. So Debra, is your birthday coming up? April fourteenth. Yes. 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 And then and then Judy, you just celebrated your birthday pretty much. Yep. I love that yep. for y'all. So do you feel like uh, that your chemistry just came naturally? How did that? How did this develop? But what do you think? Um, <laughs> I think we've always had chemistry. Uh, I saw her on social media in what, 2017 or was it 2016 or 17? And she was doing like a positive uh, speak thing, something about God and believing in yourself. And it just really hit me. So I was like, oh my God, I love her. I just want to follow her. So I followed her and later I ended up doing promo for her. Uh, for the miracle drops, because she was doing promo with celebrities, and she was paying more than anybody um, that I had ever heard uh, do some uh, promo for social media, right? So uh, as time went on, I finally met her. She was in Georgia. She was in Atlanta. She was doing like this worldwide tour, and it was like a huge venue with like three to five thousand people. And I'm like, who the hell is this lady? I thought she sold hair products. But she's like selling out venues. So anyway, I go in this place. It's packed. Her, I tell her people I'm there. Um, it takes about 30 minutes for her to get to me. And I'm like, hold up now. You got the brat. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting on this lady to come to the front to meet me. I'm like, what's going on? So she finally makes it after her stops of autographs and pictures, darling. So she gets to me. I'm like, hi. You know, we meet. We hug. We take a picture. It was kind of hectic in there. So I was like, let's link later. Of course. So then when she said, let's link later, I'm like, oh, we going to link later? No. <laughs> so she thought, you know, she was inviting me to do some more promo videos or whatever. I pulled up there by myself. She was like, well, where your camera guy? Where your team? I was like, what they needed to come She came from? to the studio by herself, someplace she had never been. It's this pretty little lady, like, getting out of the car. You know, her butt is huge, so her outfit is tight. It's sexy. Anyway, without her even trying, she got this long ponytail, you know, these long fingernails, jewelry down. I'm like, you are out in these streets like this by yourself. Why are you by yourself? So anyway, so we're at the studio and we're talking and time is passing and we talk about different things that we're interested in. And I turned out and I said, well, I'm interested in you. Oh, what she do that for? <laughs> oh, Lord, what she do that for? Girl, I tried to smoke a blunt. I burnt a hole in the couch. My nerves were shot after that. I tried to drink something. I missed my mouth. Everything was like all my nerves and my swag was absolutely gone. Like I was hiding from her. I became like shy, overwhelmingly shy. Like it was ridiculous. I turned into somebody else. Right. So we text, we started texting back and forth on the phone, back and forth, FaceTiming and stuff. So she invites me back to Atlanta a few times, but stood me up every single last one of them. Not every single last All one. All of, of them. She makes She it. wants now the first time I was like, okay, she said her phone, her ringer was off. She forgot about it. Then I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna figure something else out to do here. Let me find somebody that I can record with and just hand back to New Orleans. So I didn't feel as bad. The second time I was like, nah, girl. The third time I was like, you playing with me? Like, what? What is this? Why no, you got me keep coming here? I wasn't playing with you. I just wasn't used to somebody so aggressive that tells you. You the one get... that told me to come to Atlanta. You the one that told me you was 
interested in me. And I know, you but t- why would you say come to Atlanta if you wasn't going to show up? But anyway. I wasn't not trying to show up. You you act like you don't understand. Like, I had other things going on. You might have just been a little bit, you know, uh, it, it's, it might have been taking a step back. You know, you Judy, a woman that knows what she wants. You know, so well, that is, even if that's the case, why invite me to come there? First that's of all, what I'm saying. So then, so then after, that after a all couple of those, times, like you are really dragging it in the mud. After all like, of those times so that, that times. Had, it was like three times. After the three times that it happened, I was like, you know what? She's she's obviously got whatever she got going on over there. She's not ready for anything. First so. of all, we were constantly talking all the time, and then the few times, it's a couple times she did come to Atlanta. Don't act like I didn't see you. Not one time you came to Atlanta. Not one time. It was three times she stood me up. How many times did I see you when you came to Atlanta? Maybe twice. She's act like she acting like every time she came. Uh, maybe I stood twice. Her so, but She's after so that, oh. I, I stopped. I stopped trying to pursue her because I felt like she wasn't interested. But we so, were still constantly talking and communicating. Right, and so we were constantly talking and communicating. But I started talking and communicating with other people. And so then she got mad. I look at social media. This bitch hugged up with some nigga. <laughs> okay. You see the back of this man's body and she all cheesing and big Kool-Aid, test cheetah ass smile. And I'm like, what is going on? The least she could have did was say, hey, you know what? I can't. I got to move on. Have the decency to communicate and tell me she, how tell me you're she, moving on. She the same one that didn't communicate to tell me not to come to Atlanta all the time. But you come to Atlanta all the time. You was in Atlanta. I was coming to Atlanta oh just for God, you. Girl. All of those times I came to Atlanta just for you. All of those times you. you act like you never saw me when you came. Oh, my God. She sees well, you, know, you know, it still worked out. It still worked out for the best, you know. And I will say that, uh, you know, Debrat, it's it feels as though like Judy still she gets you out of your your comfort zone. I feel like, right? I think that, um, you know, from the jump, when you saying that when she told you that she was interested in you, you over there, you done burnt the couch. You just shaking it, shaking in your boots, you know, <laughs> about what she's what she said she was interested in you. And I think just in general, we've seen a different side of you, right? Um, a, a softer side of, of that. Absolutely. And do you think that Judy is the reason she's the one that may have softened you up, at least publicly? We don't know who you were privately or well, privately necessarily. I don't even know who the, I don't even know who the fuck I am now. Okay? <laughs> okay, where's my swag? Where's shoot 'em up, bang bang, rob your house and take your jewelry brand? Like, where is she at? <laughs> yeah, she absolutely takes me out of my comfort zone. But I think it's a great thing that I get to show more vulnerability when I kind of hated it at first. Cause I was like, I don't want people to see me soft. It was a thing. Like you don't want to be seen as soft. Cause I feel like when people see you soft or they know your weak side, that's when they take advantage of you, you know? Yeah, I get that. I could get that completely. But I, I will say though, seeing this other side of you, especially because we've known the other side of you for so long, right? Seeing this different side of you, it's a little refreshing. It's so nice to see you happy and, <laughs> and enjoying yourself and so cute. You're so cute on it. Like both of y'all are just so cute online. Um the way that you interact with each other, the fact that Judy calls you beautiful, like that's how you, she she uh you answer to beautiful. I love that. I love that y'all have this uh relationship. Now, um, Judy, to you, uh, first of all, I want to talk about Kaleidoscope. You have had major success throughout the years that you've been in business. Um, what do you owe all of that su- success to? Uh, God. <laughs> if I have to say that first in my faith, I felt like anything is possible. I didn't have this plan for my life at all. It's not like I said, when I grow up, I want to be a millionaire. When I grow up, I want to... that. I've never said that. <laughs> I've never said that. I feel like um, I was a hairstylist and I was cool with making sure that each year my income, my, my revenue grew by 15, 20% or so. I never saw all of this. I feel like I don't take it for granted that God has blessed me with the opportunity to build a huge platform, nor do I take it for granted that God has also blessed me with the opportunity for my businesses to be very lucrative. So I understand that my response that my blessings also come with responsibilities. And I think he feels I'm responsible enough to be able to do right by not only my platform, but by my financial blessings and by all the opportunities that it gives me. I love that. I love that so much. Um, and now, you know, with being an entrepreneur and a business owner, you've supported so many other business owners and so many other people in general. I think you're very uh, you're really into philanthropy. 
in a, in a sense, right? I know you hold the Guinness Book of World Records when it comes to the world's largest donation of hair care products in 24 hours. And that was at the Harlem Pride event, right? So why did you choose that event to break a world record? Um, Actually, that was something at the time that my team suggested. We were supposed to do it in New Orleans because I hold, I hold two records. The first one was the most toys donated within an hour. It was me and my friend, um, Super that has the crayon case. So we had that. We got we broke that one in twenty eighteen or nineteen. I'm not sure. One of those. So for me, the second one was supposed to be in New Orleans, but we wound up doing it in New York because they were having we were having a lot of pride events there. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that we aligned it with our community because who we gave it to, the the specific foundation we gave it to is a LGBTQ plus um yeah, foundation. And a lot, I feel like a lot of stuff that isn't talked about is when people are transitioning, like when the girls are transitioning into becoming something else and the guys are transitioning into becoming something else, there is a lot of hair loss and there is a lot of different things for that. So I was just trying to touch that community. I love that. I really do. Now, uh, you know, Kaleidoscope has done so well with hair products and you see all these other brands, you know, expanding, like, for example, Fenty has done like 10,000 things, right? For example, do you see Kaleidoscope expanding? You know, maybe like hair. Uh, well, not hair, obviously. You guys do hair. Like maybe even like um, a wig line, you know, or like makeup or a freak. I mean, look, bald heads got to like myself. We need... You know. <laughs> so for 2024, we are crossing the aisle. Can't tell you where, but we are crossing the aisle. So quite a few different things that we have never done before. I'm super excited about it because it's, it goes along with our uh, lifestyles already. It goes along with our mission. It goes along with what I, what we already doing. So yeah, I'm ex I'm really excited about that. <laughs> okay, if it's if it's anything for the bald head scallywags, just make sure you send it at my one. No, I'm just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I got that for you already though you playing the miracle if you want hell the miracle I don't I don't this was a choice it was a choice <laughs> if you do cuz I know you know people be short by choice yeah for sure for sure now uh, I want to get into kaleidoscope by Debrat um this is your first collaboration together when it comes to uh, a large scale and Judy, I saw uh, your interview on The Sherry Show, and I saw that you said that you wanted to bring Debrat into the situation because you said that she doesn't know her full earning potential. And when I heard you say that, when I heard you say that, I honestly, uh, that that meant a lot. I don't know, even know if you, if you said it with, like, intention for it to mean so much to other people, but having a partner that sees value in you for them to uh, put you in these ventures and put you in the forefront of a business, especially for you that's already doing so much and making so much money, that means a lot, right? And it's kind of like speaking life into your partner. So uh, Brett, on your end, outside of you know the making money from the product and doing the promotional stuff and helping with it, what was that like? Uh, it like spiritually, like in your soul, to know that your partner is wants you to get up on this, get up on this and be, get, bring yourself to your full and maximum potential. I mean, it's crazy. It's inspiring. And I'm totally blessed to have met someone like her who believes in not just herself, but believes in the things that I want to do, like whatever I want to do, she supports it. Like, so, you know, for her to say, you are the main person who worn, who's worn protective style since the nineties out of any rapper, anybody that I know, in the, in the music business. And she's right. And I don't think I paid attention to that. And I just think it's awesome to have somebody to help me like capitalize off of something that I've been doing for years that I probably should have done years ago, but I didn't have her. And now I do. And I'm able to learn and grow and just, you know, be smarter about the business moves I make and everything. It's an honor and a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Seeing you two work together. Um, it's really beautiful. The collaboration overall, I know y'all y'all said y'all was like bumping heads a little bit at the beginning. Has everything worked out for the better? Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> and we still bump heads a little. I mean, that's yeah, what still, I, she, she, she always said I'd be snitching, but we still bump heads a little because, you know, like having... There she go. Having having your own collection or being a person that has a collaboration with somebody, there's expected deliverables. So I will have my team set out all the expected deliverables. And then, you know, it's like I'll just send it over to her. I'll put it in black and white, put it in colors, put it in video format. I put it in whatever format she needs. It's still it's still gonna be, you know what? 
pass me your phone. Let me post this for you. Pass me your phone. Let me post this for you. So outside of that, I feel like knowing who your partner is and how your partner is. Like I'm the type of person now what I've learned is I'm going to take her for a day. We're going to get everything shot in a day and I'm just going to post it. There we go. Not that's a, it's like a happy meeting. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, yeah, yeah, you're looking like you're not a fan of that answer, Brad. I mean, I'm cool with that answer, but we bought heads because she stay on her damn phone and computer all the time. Like, there's no breaks. She sleeps with it. It's glued to her before we go to sleep. We don't even pillow talk sometimes because she be up on the phone scrolling. I'm like, what the hell is you scrolling? Like, put the phone down sometimes. Let's watch a movie. Let's do X, Y, and Z. She's addicted to her phone. But I've kind of gotten used to it, and I try to understand and get better at it because that's how she's become so successful, by scrolling and paying attention to what's going on in the world, with the culture, who's doing what, you know, and grabbing those people and snatching those people for promo. So sometimes I get a little jealous of the phone and stuff, but we're a work in progress. We're a regular couple and we go through regular shit. And you can see that on Brad Loves Judy, April 27th, girl, season three. I put my phone down these last time we were watch, binge watching shows. Let me tell you, I will, we, she will want to binge watch a show with me and in the middle of episode one. <laughs> No, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I'm not even, I can't even get mad at you. I'm the same way. So, so but the issue <laughs> is with me, if it's something scary, I already, I'm already a, a, like a person that don't like really like horror stuff. I have to watch this till the end because I got to know that the bad guy dies. Or she I'm should gonna stop go watching because if I go to sleep, we're not watching it together anymore. But now I'm going to go to sleep and have a dream that he didn't kill me. I need to watch <laughs> him die. I got to watch it. And now you got, now I'm up till three o'clock in the morning. I'm on episode 13 and you mad, but I have to have a resolve on no, this. No, you should wait for me. If we started watching <laughs> it together, you should stop. Don't leave me. Cause then you're going to know what's going to happen. When but I'm, I'm going to have a nightmare you. unless I know that he died. Oh, you're so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Brad, you did mention this, the third season of Brat Loves Judy. First of all, congratulations on three seasons total. That's amazing. Um, so when it comes to having a reality show, right, I think that some, some reality stars have said that, you know, it's a little, it can be intrusive and it can be very like, it can weigh a lot on a relationship, especially the ones that are about love and marriage and things like that. So how do you guys find time to yourselves without the cameras to prioritize you like, you know, your love life with each other off of screen? Ooh, girl, we'd be so happy when they go, girl. Oh my goodness, it is very intrusive, but we realize that if we don't show people the real in our everyday lives, then they won't understand how we deal with conflict, how we uh, resolve things, how we get through things that are like tough. You know, we, we, we wanted to show where people can relate to our relationship and see that this real shit that goes on here. Like, it's not fake. It's not scripted. It's not nobody said do this and do that. These are things that like really, really happen. And oftentimes it's hard to have like a conversation with your wife about some shit that you mad at. And you've got 10 cameras in the room. You want to really tell them get the hell out. But you kind of learn how to just deal with it and ignore them and just, you know, focus on her and, and then try to figure it out. My partner and I, we when we argue, I don't want anybody else like we'll he, we'll try to like have situations outside in public and it's like no i need to go in the house like i don't want to do this in front of everybody so yeah i commend you guys i couldn't do this in front of cameras it it, it was hard for me at first when we had our first argument because we don't really argue a lot we we kind of try to not be that way with each other but when we had our first argument i was like i want the cameras out get out of here i'm stopping i don't want to do this shit no more she was like no let the cameras let, the cameras let them run and I was like, oh, no, Lord. I was like, this is really what you want to do? You right. Want to she do looked at me. She said, oh, oh, this is what we're doing? I said, this is what we're doing. Because, and, and it had nothing to do with it. For me, I felt like let it get ugly so they can see the beautiful. You know, let it get ugly so they can see the resolve. Let, let them know that it's not... It's not just always butterflies, rainbows, and shit. Like, it, and let's just see how this unfolds. Let's let's just let this unfold how it's gonna naturally unfold on television. We signed up to give the world, you know, transparency. We gonna give them transparency. Like and sure that. enough, 
as uncomfortable as that is to watch on TV. We Woo. get so many different messages and so many different yeah. comments, so many different people that say, you helped me through this. And right. watching y'all resolve y'all issues about this helped me be able to open up and talk to my partner right. about this because it was just a hard conversation to have. Yeah. That makes it all worth it. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Hearing what what you have done for other people, I'm sure it's, it's, it's so, it's filling. It's very filling for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, in the new season, I'm sure we're going to see stuff about the baby. So we are, first of all, congrats. congrats. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so happy for you guys. Uh, when you guys first announced it, I think I, myself, along with everybody else in the world, was like, oh my God, like I oh, I was not expecting this. Like, first of all, it's just, it's great. It's great to see this. Now, uh, Brad, you've been stressed out. I've seen you on, I've seen you on, on the social medias. Uh, you, you, I look, I've seen you, first of all. <laughs> I saw that uh, Judy posted a video about you saying that, should you drink milk? <laughs> to to develop help develop the breast milk um you know it's and then you know on top of all of that i did see that you were like you know i i'm so used to wearing baggier clothes when i i had on something a little tighter i was like oh my gosh i'm pregnant so how is this how has this journey been for you how's your and on house has your uh view on pregnancy changed cuz now that you are no longer seeing other people doing it you're the one doing it has things like shifted in your mind a little bit yeah, it's absolutely shifted. First of all, I had no idea I would ever be pregnant. Pregnant. So I think when other people were pregnant, it was like, oh yeah, haha, they pregnant, whatever. But it is a major thing. Like it is like a miracle. Like there's a person in my belly. And there's another heartbeat happening, like in inside of me. So it's like, I don't know. It's it's just crazy. It's kind of unreal to me still. And I just feel like I'm so blessed that God allowed me to be able to carry our child you know what i'm saying and i i i don't know what to say sometimes i look in the mirror and be like oh shit bitch you pregnant like you are really you're showing you're poking out like you're gonna really have like a baby so i don't i don't know if it's registered my wife goes i don't think you know you're pregnant for real you know the things you do you need to sit down and you need to i mean really all i do is sleep i have carpal tunnel in both hands my ankles and feet swell up and i'm just like wow but i'm just taking it all in it's it's of course it's an experience i've never experienced before but i'm excited about it i mean i have like 20 pairs of jordan sitting over there for the baby um like i am so excited i can't wait to raise our child like the love of my life what a blessing to get to have a child like with my baby like <laughs> i have her egg in me you know like it's it's just unreal and it didn't seem like it, it could be possible but it is possible and we're gonna have our little miracle drop and i just can't wait <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make me cry that is so beautiful um and now you know i want to know were you mentally prepared for pregnancy because i saw you were talking about you didn't pass your first semester we're like girl it's a trimester girl <laughs> Listen, let me tell you hey i'm new to this shit, okay so you can say whatever you want to say i have a lot of questions that i still don't understand i was just asking her if the baby takes if i'm so out of breath now because i can barely breathe when i talk sometimes and the baby is in water how the hell is the baby taking my air and the baby don't need no air because the baby's breathing in water like it's a lot of co- Confu- you know questions that i have as a brand new mother that i don't understand like i was told to drink a lot of milk my older godmothers and mother they like you need to drink a lot of milk so i'm thinking i need to drink milk to fill my titties up so my baby could i can develop some good milk for my child <laughs> to breastfeed i didn't realize i develop it myself like people that don't have kids don't know these things so i really have legitimate questions like the circumcision thing I don't want, if it's a son, if I, we have a son, my baby, that meat got to get cut. I'm not trying to have my son around here with no <laughs> long extra meat. This just don't seem clean. But then she was explaining to me that some religions, they don't let them cut the meat off. So I was telling her, it's our decision. It's not the, she said the doctor should just automatically do it. I said, no, it's the parent's decision. You have to, you just decide to do it. And I think it's okay for you to have all the questions because you're a new mommy. Not only are you a new mommy, it's not like you did research about it and said, hey, I'm going to go look to get pregnant. We kind of 
we kind of decided this and went straight into it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. I think I will say, you asking the questions that I wanted to ask, too. Because, I mean, I've never... I, some of these questions are so, like, so far out. Like, you always you always see, like, you know, pregnancies, nine months, you have three trimesters, you did da, 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 all the basic stuff. But I think you really get to the real questions, you know? So, like, yeah. like I, I appreciate that. Because me, I've never been pregnant before either. So, you know, you're asking some questions that I might need some answers to. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, I have a lot of them. Child. I love it. I love it. Now, uh, Judy, what has it been like to be on this side of the fence? You've had three kids, you know, so you were you were on the fence of, of having the babies, and now you're on the other side of supporting the person who's having a baby. So what has that been like? Uh, has it been kind of like a shock to you, uh, to the way that you handle everything? Um, I think it's been a blessing. I feel like we have a unique situation where – she can have a partner that can say, you know, hey, that's going to be all right. Things are fine. I think with her being so inquisitive and her being so, like, all of the things just, like, blow her mind. Like, we, I posted our first, her first reaction to ultrasound. You know, like, it's like, it's like, well, look at the baby. What you mean? What am I looking at? What is these little circle dots? What's the black? What's the this? So I think, <laughs> I think for me it's just very satisfying to watch my wife fall in love with our baby along the way, you know, the whole entire time. I've, I've been saying, I think she should be the carrier because she's so nurturing and the experience, I felt like she would fully embrace. So it feels good to actually not only watch her embrace it, but far past anything I ever thought I could have even imagined. Like the, she got, we got the little Jordans and she took the Jordan out the box and she started crying. She like, I was like, you never saw a small shoe. She was like, no, it's just, the foot that I saw in the ultrasound is going to go in this shoe. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, like, it's it's so phenomenal to watch because I know, I know how she's feeling. You know what I'm saying? And I get to be able to feel it with her. So, yeah, it just makes me happy. That is so beautiful. Um, so what have you both learned about yourselves in this this journey so far? Never say never. That's what I've learned about myself. Never say never. I mm -hmm. think I would say the same because I thought I had my, ch my children. Yeah. Oh, I feel like, girl, my children is old. Mm -hmm. I've been there, done that. We live in life. We got these dogs. And then, you know, we're here. Yeah. Well, we are excited to see your bundle mm -hmm. of joy. Now, I will say that the story behind, um, you know, getting pregnant is something that uh, is very is notable, right? I think that more and more now we're seeing a lot more women coming out about their struggles when it comes to getting pregnant and through pregnancy as well. And I think people don't talk about those types of struggles that, or they used to not talk about those struggles often. Both of you guys have had your own situations when it comes to, um, you know, having to getting pregnant. And then on top of that, you know, the age limit that is put on us as women, you guys have surpassed that as well and, and redefined what it is like to be pregnant you know over the age of 40 so that impact overall right brett specifically i want to ask you have you thought about what that impact has been like to share your story and to also redefine what it's like to be pregnant over a certain age i've i've never Sorry. i've never really thought of what it would be like to share my story like we're just living our lives and 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 fortunately, and I'm grateful that it blesses other people and that it inspires and encourages other people who want to, you know, have a child or, you know, at an older age or do any of the same things that we're doing. Like, we didn't realize we were going to be like a lesbian power couple. We just fell in love and we wanted to get married and we just, we're living our fairy tale and our lives and... It, so to know that it inspires others, that that's the biggest blessing because both of us, we love to, we love for our hearts to be warm by blessing other people. Like we're both givers and no matter what we do, we ask each other, did your heart get warm? And she'll say, yeah. And then we like, oh, that's all that matters, you know? So, and I'm the same way. So I didn't realize we were going to be like role models for lesbians. I didn't realize we were going to be role models for uh women over 40 that, that, that wants to have babies. But I love that. Like, I can appreciate that because it's, it's happening without us even trying. Like, we just want to be good parents, good people, um, do good by people and just spread love and, and raise a beautiful, healthy baby. Like, we don't we don't ask for much. You know, we just love doing stuff for people and um, we just want a healthy baby. We ain't like, I want a girl. I want a boy. We just want a healthy child to love that we can bring into this world to 
instill our love in and just grow and put some Jordans on it. <laughs> Well, we and do his hair and put some kaleidoscope yeah. in their hair. <laughs> yes, come on, product placement. Yeah. <laughs> we love to see it. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to see the third season of Brad Loves Judy. Can't wait for you guys for you to to give birth, and I'm sure that that process is going to be beautiful. Might be a little painful, but beautiful overall. So we are yeah. so excited to see what comes next from Brad and Judy. Thank you. Oh, thank That's you. April 27th, girl. Yeah. We April 27th. Thank we you. We appreciate guys. you. Thank you.